this belongs to everybody. It, I didn't know this because I was a lawyer. I knew this by just simply looking at the rules and spending some time looking at the rules. Most of what I learned in three years of law school was a waste of time. What everybody can learn, an eighth grader can learn it. It's not rocket science. Hi there folks, it's Gavin here from Sovereign Empowerment and I am graced with the presence of Dr. Graves. Dr. Graves is the creator of the course that Damien and I have discussed in the previous video. I'm thinking it's actually longer now, but you're a 37 maybe plus year veteran attorney in the United States, is that correct? Almost 40. Yeah. Wow, okay. Dr. Graves knows what he's doing and uh, he's here kindly graced us with his presence to explain the, the course and the basics of perhaps how we over here need to put our claims together. So with that said, Dr. Graves, I just wondered if you could uh, perhaps give a brief introduction as to who you are and uh, how this course came to be. This may come as a surprise. It all started when I was five years old. I went to uh, my grandmother's church and there was a stained glass window and there was a, seemed like a nice looking young man. He was walking on a pathway and there were a couple of women that were kneeling and adoring him and, and a big stained glass, beautiful stained glass window and morning sun was shining through and this fellow had holes in his hands and holes in his feet. And we've lost our first love. Your nation just crowned a king and the head of the church there, he talked about Christ. And when we look at that Christ on that cross, we realize that this is not something we want to have happening in our time. We don't want to nail people to crosses and we don't want to take their wherewithal, their hard earned living without there being some sort of representation and support by these entities that selves in positions of leadership in our government. And yet people have never un understood. And, and until the internet, it's not been possible really to reach the people en masse about this idea that you have more than just your vote to make the world safe for innocent carpenters or single moms who have their children taken away or people that are trying to start a business and somebody, it could be a competitor or it could be the government come in and say, no, you have to close your business because you don't have a ramp in the front for the wheelchair or your bathroom isn't big enough and all these different things that limit the ability of the little guy to live his life. Are we, you're nodding. I like that. Okay. So maybe we're going to get into people's heads and get into their hearts at the same time, because I think that's where it has to begin. And I think that's where we've made a mistake where I've made a mistake over the years in trying to help people and not realizing that we need to lay the ax to the root of the tree. What is the root of the problem? I think the root of the problem is that our self-interest individually and in the position of people in high places is getting in the way of doing what's right. But when you feel like the only thing you have to make things right is to wait until it's time to go to the polls and cast your vote, feel powerless about that. So now we know that there's a magical thing that's existed since Cicero, probably, and certainly since the, the 18th century, 17th century, over there, 16th century, no doubt, called a pleading. Pleading, there's a word, pleading. Probably most people that, that hear this video even know they're interested in all this, may not know what a pleading is, and certainly probably don't know how to to write one correctly. But if you were to get this out for the entire UK public, we're looking at maybe one in a thousand knows what a pleading is or ever heard the word. And yet that is your power. That's where it begins. And so I've enjoyed helping people to understand how to use pleadings to force these people in high places. Pay attention. 
And once the pleading is sufficiently, uh, what's the word? I like to say, drive a nail in their head. When you're pleading, drives a nail in their head and you can't pull it out because you've done it correctly. You've got your foot in the door. Now they have to answer questions under oath or go to prison. If, if they don't respond to these things that, the, that too many of your soldiers and our soldiers have died for, then you have the power to make these people, these recalcitrant people who don't want to obey the law, you have the power to force that judge to sign an order sending them to the jailhouse. And then they'll answer your questions. Or if you need them to produce a document or a toothbrush or a tire that exploded on the highway, whatever it may be that you need in the form of evidence, you have this power. You have it there. You have it in the United States. You have it in Canada. Somebody signed up for my course yesterday from Iceland. And it's, it, it really is exciting to share with people that you have this power that goes far beyond your vote. If you're not happy with what's going on at the school, where they're teaching your children something that you don't think is correct, or where your government over there, or whether it's in Iceland or Taiwan or Spain or Australia, wherever it is, the people have this power they didn't know they had. And now we have the internet. And it was never possible really to share this power because the only way to give it to you would be in a big stack of books. But now we have this program that somehow I've led to create called howtowinincourt.com. And we're also working on some other things. We have wordwar.com and we have americanjusticefoundation.com, which is an organization and nonprofit trust to promote these principles of justice so that we're not just going to court and trying to win our individual case. But so we're also standing up for what's right and teaching everyone what justice is and what it takes to get justice. But again, going around about the barn here a little bit, but if you come back to what I started out with, we, we don't want people nailed to a cross. That fellow was nailed to a cross at the behest of the chief judge of Israel. The chief judge of Israel broke the law of Israel to, and then inveigled Pilate to have him nailed to the cross. Pilate wasn't He's not the one that was behind it all. It wasn't Pilate's idea. Pilate didn't want to do it. But the chief justice and his cronies, the court people who were obligated to do what was right, did not do what was right. They broke the law to get this Pilate guy to do this. We have this happening today. We have judges breaking the law. We have lawyers twisting the law doing everything they can to confuse the public and confuse the judge and confuse the jury. But here you go. You have rules. You have them over there. We have them over here. We inherited much of our present legal system from you people in England. The common law of England was adopted in this country. It's right in the constitution of many of the state constitutions. I know it's in the constitution of Florida. That's where I have my license to practice. It says right there. The common law of England is adopted unless superseded by statute. So we, we have the same fundamental idea about what's right and wrong, which comes out of the common law, not out of the statutes, not out of the rules. But that's another story we could take up maybe on another time, the value of the common law, which is for the common man. But we have these rules, and the rules have to be obeyed. And once you know how to force people to obey the rules, how to force the judge to enforce the rules, I had a fellow put in prison one time. He didn't want to answer my question. He didn't want to produce some documents. So I went through this process that my course teaches, and they locked him up. And then he answered my question so he could go free. This belongs to everybody. It, I didn't know this because I was a lawyer. I knew this by just simply looking at the rules and spending some time looking at the rules. Most of what I learned in three years of law school was a waste of time. What everybody can learn, an eighth grader can learn. It, it's not rocket science. So you have the power because of the courts. But I think there's a little bit too much people concentrating on the darkness well, look at the darkness. Oh, look at this. Oh, that's not right. Well, let me tell you about what happened and on about all the ugly stuff. 
instead of maybe spending more time lifting this light. You don't have to have my course. My course is great. Help you understand these things quickly. But whether you have my course or don't have my course, for heaven's sakes, learn what this power is that the rules of court provide for you. Well, I like to tell people this blew me away when I found it out. The rules of Major League Baseball in the United States, last I heard, the little booklet was 125 pages. 125 pages to understand all the rules of baseball. The rules of evidence in every federal court here in the United States can be written on like 15 pages. It's not too much to learn. It's not hard to learn. The course makes it easy for you to understand those rules. You have the same rules over there, but we have a populace. The English-speaking people all over the world have this right, and they don't know they have. They think, I got to wait. I got to vote for the my party. I got to vote for my party because it's my party. And knowing that some of the things in your party are not right, but you've chosen the party, so you vote. This has got to stop. And we can return civilization to sanity by using the courts. That's what they were created for. You may not know that Moses was behind this idea of courts way back when. He created this system where every little hamlet, every little village had a judge. And that judge was answerable to another judge. And ultimately, those judges were answerable to the judges in Jerusalem, the high judges. The high priest was also the chief judge. We have this system we've inherited, and we're not using it. We're letting the lawyers use it. We're letting the rich people and corporations that can afford to hire lawyers to use this system against us. Well, we're the people, the people of England, the, the guy that runs a shop down there, and he's or, or he's selling fish and chips, he's doing the best he can, or he's working in a mine, going down and chipping away at coal in the bottom of the earth. These people, that's what power of civilization is. We are the people, but we've never had the knowledge to use the courts. The courts have been usurped over there by your barristers and solicitors who would like you to think that they're smarter than you are. They're not. They're not a bit smarter than the average person over there. But they know things you don't know. But now, because of the internet, there's no reason for your children not to know. There's no reason for your old people to not to know. But you've got to beat the drum. You've got to tell people. You don't have to just wait and vote at the polls. If you don't, what the schools are teaching your children, file a pleading. Make the people at the school board answer questions under oath. Why are you doing this? Where did you come up with this idea? Why, why, why? And then couple that with the wisdom and the beauty and the loveness of, well, there's a good word, loveness, of the common law. The old cases that go way back into history where people knew what was right and wrong and cared about the little guy. Today, it's, we got to do what makes the corporations happy. You people can turn this around, but it's going to take you people. We can't wait on somebody else to do it. It doesn't do any good. Curse the people that are making mistakes. Cursing the darkness never made the darkness go away. Only way I know to make darkness go away is you lift a lamp, period. And that's pretty much it. Brilliantly said. There was a, somebody I saw a video actually yesterday said that you can't comply your way out of tyranny. And I think that's perfectly matched with your comments about darkness. And I completely agree. Now, you've mentioned the word pleading there. All we've got to do is make our pleading. Over here, there are lots of different groups now that have produced lots of different types of templates that have been very educational if they've served the purpose. But we've got such a volume of people now that are aware and trying to do stuff that there's masses of these different templates being sent, served on these different corporations, and they're not working. And the problem that a lot of people then have is, what do we do next? How are we supposed to do something? about this because the substance of the notices might be correct, but they're lacking the knowledge of how to go further forward. So when you say the word pleading, what do you mean? How are we supposed to approach that situation? It's so simple. Once you, I really believe that we can get this into the children's schools there and here. We're working diligently. We're trying to raise funds to do this. Of course, you say you're going to raise funds. People's eyebrows go up and think you're trying to calm them. We're not trying to calm and con anybody. We're just, we have enough sense to know that if we don't start teaching the children, it's never going to happen. But we have duty and we have the breach of duty. You owe duty to people. I owe duty to people. And then there's people that owe duty to us. When they breach the duty, 
they've created what's called a cause of action that the courts recognize. Now, not everything that upsets me will be recognized by the court. The court isn't going to help me because somebody looked at me and made me feel bad. You can't file a pleading and expect the court to deal with, Your Honor, somebody made me feel bad, so they owe me $100,000. That's just nonsense. But if they lied about me and it hurt me and hurt my reputation, hurt my business, you have a cause of action because they had a duty not to lie about me. If they steal from me, if they commit fraud against me, if they take my children, just come home, children are gone. And the people out, and this is happening way too often. And these parents, they don't know what to do about it. Or if they're teaching your children things that are contrary to the traditional principles and values of the English speaking people, why are we not standing up to that? We're not standing up to it because we sit around thinking, oh, gee, I got to vote for the members of my party. Maybe the members of our party aren't doing the job because let's face it, folks, if the people in our parties were doing the job, we wouldn't have the problem we have. That seems to make sense to me. Maybe it doesn't make sense to some people that have very small brains, but anybody with a brain bigger than a peanut ought to understand that if things were being done the way they're supposed to be done, we wouldn't all be so unhappy as we are about how things are progressing more and more toward the rich and the powerful just get richer and more powerful and the people just end up with no power at all. So it seems to me, and I'll just say it as it is, it seems to me that God showed me something needs to be done. And then God showed me what that something is. At least part of the answer is give the people the power that they already had, that they didn't know they had. It's in the books. I didn't write any of this stuff. I didn't create any of this. All I did is explain it to people in a way that an eighth grader can understand. And you can do that over there. And stop with all the silly silver bullet ideas. I call them silver bullet solutions. They don't work because they're, it's going to take a little bit of effort. You're not going to learn this in five minutes. You have to make an effort. And if that's not worth making an effort, then don't complain when you don't win. But anything worthwhile is making an effort. It's not a huge effort, and it's not more than you can do. But if we don't do it, if you don't do it over there, and we don't do it over here, and we don't succeed in reaching the masses, not just the few tens of thousands of people that I've been able to help, but tens of millions of people who begin to realize, I don't like that, and I don't have to mortgage the home and hire a lawyer to go fight the school board for me. I'll just file a pleading, and I know how to do it now. I know how to state a cause of action, how to show that these people owed me a duty. They breached the duty, and they did it in this certain way, and that gives me the right to require the judge. We're not begging the judge. We're not pleading with the judge, although we call it a pleading. We're not, this, no, this is our right. You're, we pay you taxes to sit there with your robe and, and over there with your white wig. They still do that. We pay you people to do this, to protect us, to secure us from the overreaching of government. That's what the judiciary is supposed to be. In India, the Indian people call their Supreme Court the bulldog of the nation. Those people are there for you. You can make them do their job, but you have to know the rules. And it's easier to learn the rules of going to court than the rules of baseball. And I was actually a soccer ref one time. I went through all that. And my gosh, the rules of soccer, they're pretty complicated too. People can learn that, but nobody ever seemed to have given anybody the idea, the little inkling that maybe if we're going to learn soccer and we're going to teach our kids the rules of what's called the law, isn't it? Soccer rules are called the law. And if we're going to go to that much trouble, why don't we teach our children the rules of court? It's not hard. They, the solicitors and the barristers and the lawyers over here, they want you to believe, oh, it's too hard. You have to pay us. It's, we only charge $500 an hour. Oh, my gosh. It's just ridiculous. And we don't have to have that anymore. I'm not against people having a lawyer, but to hire a lawyer and not know what the lawyer is supposed to be doing, that's destroying people's lives today because half the lawyers I knew didn't know what they didn't know come in out of the rain. But now we can learn this and we can teach each other. It's not about me. It's about you people. 
and you learn this stuff and then you tell other people, you get excited about it and you say, look, we don't have to put up with this anymore. If there's crookedness and corruption and deceit and avarice in high places where we're paying these people to honor their duty to us, we'll just, we'll make the judges pay attention and make these people answer questions and produce documents. And we'll file the proper motions, which require the judge to act. That's all a motion is. I move the court to sign an order. I move the court to sign an order. This is not hard to do. It's not difficult. It's not differential calculus, for heaven's sake. You don't have to learn German. It's not hard. So get people over there, please, to understand that this is not only doable, it's an opportunity that never existed before in the history of the world that we have the internet, we have these tools, we have the ability to do this, or we can sit around, so many people are doing today, and just crying in their beer and just bitching and moaning about what's going on in high places and as if we need to hear that over and over again by people, as if they think that they're smart because they know what's wrong. There's nothing smart about knowing what's wrong. The smart people tell you, here's how you fix it. Let me give you a tool. Here's a weapon. Go fix it. Stop complaining about it. Go fix it. Make the world safe again for the children and the innocent carpenters. Plenty of those in the world that are being wounded this very day, probably while we were having this little chat. Good people suffered at the hands of power because they didn't know how to fight back. I completely agree. It's interesting what you say. I think over here right now, we've got this, we've got a, an army of litigators waiting in the wings. We've got a lot of people that have gone past that fear and now have the comprehension that they do have power. That's starting to dawn on a lot of us. And the way I see it now is like with your course, I've been obviously going through that course. And when you're saying it's simple, one of the things that, that dawned on me is that, yeah, it is actually very simple. And there's this perception of the law. And I think a lot of that's been done because of the programming that we've been through with this system, that the law is very complicated and you need these legal professionals, these experts that can take care of you in this situation. And we've been taught to just automatically always give our power away to other people. And we're going through this time now where it's dawning on us that actually we have all of that power. And there's been this sort of deceitful cloak laid over us that have made us believe that we don't have the power and we have to go and get experts that can solve our problems for us. And you're meant, sorry, please. Just kick that to the curb. Exactly. Violently, violently cause people to understand it. Kick it to the curb. The, that's all we spend there. The loss you know, over here, most cities, and of course, every law school has a law library. There, nothing prevented anybody from learning the law. And Google's been out. I was on the web before Google, but Google's been out for 25 years. And uh, if you want to know what the law is, it's there. Before you had to go find a law library and try to figure out how do I, which book do I look in? Now you just go Louisiana dog bite law, Google, Louisiana dog bite law, boom, there it is. Read it. You don't have to have a law degree. You don't have to go to a law library. You don't have to own all those books. It's here. You've got it. The power of the people is finally available for the people for the first time in the history of the world. So let's stand up for those people that got nailed to crosses. Let's not forget our first love. Your common law is predicated on the idea that we don't nail people to crosses. Let's put Christ right in the middle. This isn't about religion. If somebody wants to get angry about me and said, oh, that's all about religion, let them get angry. I don't care. They're wrong. It also has to do with justice. Yeah, sure, there's a religious aspect to all of that. We know that. We're, we're not daft, and God is. But the reality is that we've missed the point, I think, some of it, in failing to realize that, that what happened at Calvary, and nobody stood up to it, and it was the corruption of the court 2,000 years ago in Jerusalem, the corruption of the court resulted in that. And here we are today, 2023, people complaining every single day to me. Oh, let me tell you about the corruption in my court. Let me tell you about the corruption. Oh, you come to Chicago. There's nothing like it. Never. And then some little podunk town in 
Oklahoma or something, and they come and say the same thing. Oh, the corruption here is greater than anywhere else in the world. And I just get sick of hearing it. It's if you don't like the corruption, do something about it. Learn how to take the corruption down, kick it to the curb, shine the light on it, make it run away like a vermin, little vermin that it is. If you got a crooked judge, straighten him out. Most judges are good people. I will make sure to say that because I believe it with all my heart. Most of the judges I met were good people. Most of the lawyers I met were vermin, but we can take them down. We can make this thing work, but it takes the public. It takes, it takes, it takes a village. It takes all of us, but we can do it. But it, the catch-22 is that people don't want to do the work. They don't want to learn it. They want somebody to do it for them, and that is, that's not the key to success. If, I agree. If you, don't want the weeds, if you don't want the weeds in your yard, you can sit around and looking out the window here. I look out at my yard and I can curse them. I can be angry. Somebody ought to do something, but that's not going to get rid of the weeds. And we've got weeds in high places and cursing it and going on. We ought to just start telling each other. We really need to start standing up to each other and saying, look, we don't need to hear that. We've heard all that. Tell us how to fix it. Tell us how to write a pleading that's proper, that the judge can't ignore, that, that we'll get past the motion to dismiss. I mean, it's, and then you got, then the door's open. You've got all these tools and weapons once you get your pleading in the door. And then they have to answer questions under oath. They have to produce documents or go to jail. They have to admit things under oath. And you have that power. And for the people not to know that, it's just criminal for the people not to know that, but it's up to nice, wonderful people like you and your friends to share this vision that I have that can be your vision, can be your shared vision. And it's no longer my vision. It's your vision. It's our vision. We are the people. We want to listen. We want to be governed. We don't want to be ruled. Let me say that again. There we want to be governed. We want to be governed by goodness. We want to be governed by equity. We want to be governed by what's fair to everybody, including the little guy that has to go around and chip coal in the mine. We want to be fair to him, not just the big corporations. We do not want to be ruled, and we are increasingly being ruled by people in high places that know they can get away with it because they have this idea, which we are going to displace. We are displacing this idea that we can't do anything about it. Let me tell you something. You want, once you know how to file a pleading and do a few motions for discovery and all that, you can do something about it. And they can no longer pull the wool over our eyes because we can go into the then say, no, your honor, I want this man to appear on Tuesday. I want to put him under oath. I want him to answer some questions. And it belongs to each and every one of you. And how many people gave their lives? If they gave their lives, what they do that for? People say they, they died for their country. No, they died for your right to be heard. Amen to that. That's very powerful, actually. And I, that actually give me goosebumps because I, I feel very passionately about that, that we actually have a duty to honor those that have come before us, that have actually fought and died for the very rights that we actually are here today. And a lot of us, and again, it's not necessarily our fault, but a lot of us aren't aware, certainly in the UK, that we even have these rights. They do a very good job of dumbing everybody down. Please. Let's get rid of that idea. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. No, you're get, fine. Nobody dumbed anybody down. We just didn't know it was there. I did. Yeah. There's fair play. Library's there. Library's been there forever. Now we got Google. Wow. We didn't have Google 30 years ago. We did not have Google 30 years ago. There's no excuse now. Yeah. Let me caveat that. I think it's. I know. Not... I'm, I don't, forgive me, but I. That's, no, that's fine. You're absolutely right. You're, you're, no, you're, you're right. You're absolutely correct. It's more a case, I think, than it's been too easy for us to ignore it, to not even yes. be aware of it, because it's not been on our doorstep. We've been making our money, paying our bills, living our lives, and now we find ourselves in a situation whereby it's perhaps not so easy to make your money and pay your bills and live your lives. And so naturally, you start to become aware of these things that are happening. And yes. certainly for me, it was a case of when it was on my doorstep, I very quickly realized I, there was the missing link. There was this missing piece of knowledge that I just didn't know. And that natural question was, well, surely I have some rights here. This is wrong. What can I do about it? And then you naturally look to the law. And that's, I think, where the journey for a lot of people starts. And that's where we've got this group of people 
that have been trying, they've been fighting in their way, but they're using the templates and different things. And it's now a case, I think, to say, we need to stop that now. We need to go to the next level of this and we need to learn how to properly litigate. And your course for me is, for, as far as I'm concerned in the last three years, the best thing that I found that teaches exactly how to do that. And it is simple. And that's the thing that's really opened my eyes, how simple it can be. And I've been someone that's been back and forth in notices and doing these things in the earlier part of 2020. So for me to say that I've come through that thinking, wow, if I only knew this three years ago, where I'd be today. So that's my message for everybody watching this. And this is the reason I invited Dr. Graves on is just to say there is a course now. The knowledge that you're lacking is in that course. And we all need to start going through that because as soon as we have a properly equipped litigation army, that's when this thing starts to end. That's when the leverage we essentially have, but don't believe we have, starts to turn in our favor. Yes, um, good. Thank you. Thank you very much. Would you mind, you mentioned cause of action. For a lot of people out there, that will be a, that will be a term they've not heard of before. Would you mind just explaining very quickly what you mean by a cause of action? Okay, duty, breach, and damages. Duty, breach, damages. We all owe a duty. When we breach the duty and cause damages in certain circumstances, the court has an obligation to allow you to require people to do things they don't want to do, answer questions under oath, produce documents, appear for hearings, and all of that, because that's what the law is that you have. The law that's been hiding behind that closed door for everybody, the door at the courthouse that's closed, you can't get in because you don't know how. Now you're now people are learning how because because of what I've been doing. Thank you very much. Duty, breach, and damages. That's, can we remember that? Duty, breach, and that's not going to change. There's no other way of looking at it. It's duty, breach, and damages. So somebody owed a duty, they breached it, they damaged me. Now, let me give you an example of something that would used to be a cause of action. Cause of action is the right to sue. Some years ago, right after World War II, there were, and before that too, there was a cause of action for alienation of affections. And if this was a real thing. You could go to court. If you had gone overseas to fight in the war and you came home and your sweetheart or your wife that you were legally married to had decided to go off with some other guy, you could sue that guy and go to court and get damages for alienation of affections that here you were off fighting the war for the, for everybody, for civilization. And you come home and this clown has inveigled your wife into whatever that he would inveigled her into that didn't please you. You could go to court. They abolished that after a while. The court won't hear that anymore. This, it's not a cause of action. You may think it should be, and you can go out, ask the guy to meet you down some dark alley, and you can settle it, but you're not going to settle it in court because we don't recognize that. Now, breach of contract. This is a cause of action that every court recognizes. Doesn't matter where you are. Could be in Zamb Zambezi. You know, where Martinique, wherever you want to be. If you make a deal with somebody, make a binding contract or something, then there's that law that revolved around when is it binding, when does it have to be in writing and all that. But if there's a if there's a contract and the other guy breaches the contract and it costs you money, you have a cause of action because there was a duty, it was breached, and it caused damages. That's what a cause of action is. Let's take one, somebody comes up and hits you in the back of the head with a baseball bat. They had a duty not to hit you. It's called, a, it's called battery. It's a civil remedy. I got battered by this person. I had to go to the hospital. I had to have brain surgery. It cost me thousands of dollars. It's going to cost me money the rest of my life. Well, he had a duty not to hit me with a baseball bat. He had no right to hit me with a baseball bat. He breached the duty, and he caused me damages. And that gives rise to the cause of action, which is, your right to sue it gives right rise to the right to sue for battery. Or if somebody is operating a motor vehicle and he's half asleep or he's fiddling with his phone or whatever, and he runs into you, he has a duty not to run into you, whether he's fiddling with his phone or he's half drunk or he's just stupid or whatever, didn't have control of his automobile, 
didn't have his automobile properly maintained. The brakes went out or whatever. We're sorry about that, Charlie, but you had a duty to maintain your brakes and not fool with your phone. You ran into me. You had a duty. You breached it, causing me damages. This is how simple this stuff is. The lawyers, I will tell you, you won't talk about dumbing down. I don't think the lawyers have been able to dumb us down. That's not the point. The lawyers have caused us to believe that it's too hard. What the heck is hard about three things? Three, not 17, 424, two, group duty, breach, damages. Why aren't we not telling this to our children? Why is this not in at least third grade? I don't doubt for a minute that a third grader can understand. Gee whiz, teacher, Johnny had a duty. Susie told me she was going to be at the party and that she'd bring the party favors and she didn't show up and whatever, that the children aren't being told what law is. They're not being told and made to understand that the only thing between them and chaos is the law. Nothing else stands between any of us and chaos and slavery and people breaking in the windows to steal what you have and kill you and take everything. The only thing between you and that chaos is this stuff that more and more people are hating. That's dangerous. It's all the corruption is not just at the top. We've got corruption in the root of the people where they're beginning to hate government and not realize that but for government, you're, you're not safe. If you're six four and you've got a, your own Sherman tank or, or a jet airplane or whatever, or a sailboat, you can sail away. And, but otherwise, we wouldn't be safe without government. But our government can get out of control when we've allowed them to rule us instead of govern us under law. The law is our friend. And people hearing me, they're saying, no, oh, I don't like that law. I don't like that. If you don't like it, change it. Do something about it. Complaining about it is only making the matters worse. And we've got to promote these ideas. This vision that God has given me needs to be promoted in all the world, not just in England and Ireland and Spain, but Uganda. Look at what's happening in Africa and many of those countries down there that they're just completely out of control where people are being ruled with at gunpoint. We don't have that here. We ought to be very thankful we don't have that here. I went to a country in the Caribbean sometime. Oh, I went to Haiti one time, taking a boat down to the Virgin Islands from Miami. I used to do that. And here I got off the boat, tied up at the dock, and there's people there with machine guns. We don't know. We, don't, we need to be thankful for what we have, and the corruption that we have needs to be changed. And that's why you have the court down there. So knock down that closed door. Kick in the door and say, excuse me, we're here. We've got a pleading you have to deal with. We wrote it correctly. We stated our duty, the breach. We're stating the damages. We're telling you what it is. Now, now the shoe is on your foot, Judge. You have to do. You have to make these people show up. This person hurt me. This person wounded my child, and this person is going to show up in this court because my friends died for my right to be here and to be heard, especially my friend that was nailed to a cross, and I will not take no for an answer. You will. Allow me to have these people to sit in that chair and answer my questions and produce documents. And this is the power of the people that you knew this. That's water under the bridge. The thing Let's is, make I think that's exactly it. Now we can make a difference because now we are with this knowledge. And now at least those that are watching this know that course exists. I wonder just to bring this to a close, if I might just ask a question about, there's a situation over here that many people are finding themselves in. And they they don't really have the answers in terms of what to do. Now, I know that your course will give those answers, but it concerns what, what are called enforcement agents. I'm not sure if you have the same thing over there, but they're like, they, we used to have bailiffs. We have high court bailiffs where a high court writ or an order might come in and they do have legal power to go into people's properties and seize goods or whatever. But you have this other element called enforcement agents. They actually don't have any legal powers to do anything. And yet. They intimidate people, they extort cash from people, they take vehicles, all these different things. Now, taking the three points that you've just mentioned, how would they apply to a situation like that where, say, somebody's been banging on the front door or maybe you walked into the home with children there and refused to leave unless they were paid? And actually, I'll just say this. In some cases, the police even aid 
that situation. They aid the enforcement agent to do what they're doing. How would you approach something like that? The two things that come to mind immediately. First thing I would do if somebody came to my office and said, this has happened to me, what do we do? First thing I would say, let's find out what the law is. Do we have the law on our side? Is the law on our side? Does the law say that either they don't have that authority or that they're breaching their duty somehow to do this? If I don't have the law on my side, we're dead in the water. So let's, if we have the law on our side, we go to court. We say they, they had the duty, they breached the duty, they caused me damages. I want to, I want to make them show up, sit in the seat over here and answer my questions under oath. Or, and if they want to lie under oath, then I want them to be locked up behind the steel bars and until they're ready to tell the truth. That belongs to you. That's okay. But if the law is on their side and the common law, here we go. This is so important. The common law of England says, no, we go read Blackstone and we find out no. A man's castle is his castle. The state has no place coming into my castle. That's part of the common law of England. And you go back and read William Blackstone's commentaries on the laws of England, which is what started the law here in the United States. And if that's what the common law is, then we use the common law to force these people to change their statutory law that has empowered these clowns, these jackboots, to break what was the traditional principles of the English-speaking people who inherited all of this wisdom from seeing our friend on the cross. That's where, I, seriously, that really is, where, and it's not, about, I'm not talking about religion, people. We look at that, think about that. The chief judge of Israel went about intentionally purposed to get rid of this fellow, and they did. And they broke the law to do it. Now, that should have, and it has over the years, it should be inspiring us today, but it did inspire the people in your past. It did inspire people like Sir Salmon, who said, who talked about jurisprudence being a gladsome light. I read his book. That's a long time ago, Sir Salmon. And many other jurisprudential wisdom people that you have over there in, in England that were some of the the beauty of all of this comes from England, originally, way back when, your Emerald Isles, my goodness, the beauty that's there, and you've forgotten it. You've lost your first love. You've taken your eyes off of Jesus. Sorry, but that's the way it is. Forget about religion. You've taken your eyes off of Jesus. You've taken your eyes off the need to stand up for the little guy and stand up against the darkness, stand up and lift a light. And show the people, this is the way. Walk ye in it. And don't let these other people get you down. Don't let these people, the daysayers and bitchers and moaners, don't even listen to them. Don't countenance them when they're in your presence. Don't put up with it. It's part of the enemy. It really is. That darkness that they spew out in, in the name of patriotism is part of the enemy. So we're not going to put up with that anymore. We are going to start lifting the lap and handing out the tools and weapons and to be used it for the sake of the innocence and protecting innocence and in, and making the law do what it's supposed to do. And if, you're, if you've got a law over there that needs to be changed, you've got the tools and weapons to change it. You've got the ability to force these judges to allow you to put your story on, to, to be heard, to make your argument. And... It happens all the time over here. If you have children that are born with dark skin and they don't want to go to school in a separate school, they don't have to over here anymore. Because we had a case, Brown versus Board of Education. And then Mr. Miranda, you, if you're arrested, the police officer can't just wheedle a confession out of you without telling you that whatever you say can be held against you because a man named Miranda sued the state of Arizona. All kinds of things we have today because somebody changed the law. There was bad law. It was bad. And, but complaining about it isn't fixing it when you have the tools. Let me just say this real quick, just, and I'll get off. But this is what I think about all day. And thank you for an opportunity to share this. Because I, sometimes I feel like, imagine yourself, you're Jonas Saul, and you've got, you got the cure for polio. You got this vaccine that will cure polio. 
and nobody's paying attention. They just want to, they're just angry about the iron lung. They're just angry about the children with braces on their legs. They're just angry about it, angry. But you've got the cure and they won't listen to you. People like you who have the cure now, you're seeing this is, I don't have to go on and on. You're infected with this vision now. This is your vision, not my vision. It's your vision. Okay. Now, do what you can to get people to understand that, you, that this is part of the answer. There are other things that we could be doing. We could invent new medical things. We could have better schools, better, better roads, all kinds of things we could do. But at the core of all of it is that we uplift this thing called justice and we fight for it. We don't just sit around and complain about it. We fight for it with words so that other people don't have to go and spill blood. Let's spill some ink and so that other people don't have to spill blood. It's time. We got Google. <laughs> really? We, we don't. It wasn't possible 30 years ago. It's possible today. So what's uh, what's the cure to, cure to polio is here and the cure to government corruption and, and corruption of every kind is here. People died for you to have civilization where you have law. And you have a judiciary that has a responsibility to enforce the law. And the people now have the ability to learn how to force that judiciary to enforce the law. Things are getting better. Well, I think that's the perfect place to leave in the interview. Thank you so much for your time. And I think just for me, guys, just to wrap that up, Dr. Graves has created an amazing course. I can't recommend it enough. It's opened my eyes no end. And I know certainly with the claims that I'm working on, it's going to enable me to win. Um, with that said, there will be a link below in the description to the video. So please click that, check out the course for yourself. And the other thing I think I just want to finish with is stop using the templates, stop recycling the same stuff everybody else is using and start to comprehend it for yourself. So you can stand in your power and you can litigate for yourself with your cases. They're all unique to you. There aren't any templates that help you in this situation. And with that said, guys, thank you for watching. Appreciate it. Do you find the legal system overwhelming and wish you had the knowledge and skill sets to control judges, persuade attorneys, and win your case? Well, look no further. Sovereign Empowerment is proud to announce our partnership with Dr. Frederick Graves so that we can bring you the Jurisdictionary Law Course, How to Win in Court, your ultimate resource for mastering the courtroom. Unlock powerful case-winning strategies as you learn to control judges like never before. This comprehensive course eliminates guesswork and empowers you to navigate the legal landscape with absolute confidence. With step-by-step -step instructions, flowcharts, and outlines, you'll have all the tools you need to persuade and control judges in any case or court. Learn from a seasoned attorney with over 40 years of winning experience who has distilled his expertise into this comprehensive program. Access everything you need in one single package, including sample forms, video seminars, audio clips, and in-depth case-winning classes. Learn at your own pace, anytime, anywhere. Our 24-7 online access allows you to tailor your learning experience to fit your schedule. Access the course on your smartphone, tablet, or computer and become a legal master whenever and wherever you want. Benefit from a suite of powerful tools including a free online legal research tool, a legal dictionary with common sense definitions, and an exclusive Q&A forum to connect with fellow students and obtain expert guidance. Good people have suffered too long at the hands of power because they just didn't know how to fight back. Now, in a matter of just a few days, you can acquire the tools and knowledge that takes law students years to achieve. Can't afford a lawyer? No problem. With the Jurisdictionary Law Course, you'll gain the skills to win your case without expensive legal representation. Alternatively, equip your own legal consult with the tools and tactics to fight effectively on your behalf. Level the playing field and secure your victory. No matter what court, civil or criminal, conquer any courtroom challenge with ease. This step-by-step -step guidance ensures a quick and straightforward learning experience, empowering you to navigate the legal system with bulletproof confidence. Confidence. As a testament to your newfound legal expertise, you'll have the opportunity to complete a final exam and receive an honorary law degree upon successful completion of the course. Showcase your achievement and establish yourself as a force to be reckoned with in the legal arena. Dr. Graves believes everyone deserves access to legal knowledge. That's why we offer the Jurisdictionary Law Course at an unbeatable price. For less than the cost of a one-hour legal consultation, you'll gain unlimited access to this complete program for up to two 
two full years. Take control of your legal battles without breaking the bank. How to Win in Court has become the most trusted law course worldwide since 1997. Don't miss out on this exclusive opportunity to gain the upper hand in the courtroom. Enroll in the official Jurisdictionary Law Course today and unleash your legal power. Click the link in the description below to become legally empowered today.